back at Southeast Stadium where the captains are out on the 50-yard line for the Southeast Seminoles, number 99, Doyce Jackson, and number 22, the fine quarterback, George Brown. For the visiting Melbourne Bulldogs, the captains, number 55, Brian Hessinger, and number 73, Gerald Robinson. Tony, both teams come in with 10-1 and records, running down both teams' schedules quickly for Melbourne. They knocked off Martin County in the opening game, 46-6. They beat Coco 31-zip, 21-14 over Fort Pierce Central, 21-zip over Okeechobee, 31-6 over New Samarina Beach. They knocked off Satellite Beach, a fine ball club, 16-0. Come back to beat Rockledge, 21-16. And then they lost to Palm Bay, 17-14, their only loss of the year. They bounced back with three straight wins over Fort Pierce Westwood, O'Galley, and Martin County. That Martin County game, a shutout in the game last week in the state playoffs. So that gives you some indication of what kind of ball club Melbourne has. They have five shutouts on the year. Five shutouts. Well, uh, that's what we come into this thing with, too, isn't it? Southeast comes in with five shutouts. Five shutouts. As a matter of and, fact, uh, the Southeast defense has allowed 4.3 points a game, while Melbourne's giving up six points a game. So very evenly matched on defense. And if you look down at some of the teams that the Seminoles have beat, well, you know, that's, they, they that's did the I'll... Palmetto game. They blew them out 30-zip. Their only, the only loss is to Sarasota 7-0, but then they came back to beat Riverdale, Manatee, Tampa Bay Tech, Riverview, a very strong Sarasota Riverview team, East Bay. They blew Venice out, blew Robinson out, knocked off Bayshore, and then North Fort Myers last week. Well, this Seminole team is probably the best team in the state. I haven't seen a Scambia and I haven't seen Woodham, but they've beaten everybody around here except Sarasota. So Sarasota's sitting home because of that uh, crazy defeat that they got by Riverview. Riverview just ran right there over them after losing to uh, both uh, Riverview lost to, Sarah, uh, to Manatee and uh, Southeast, and yet they knocked Sarasota out of it. So here they are, probably the best team in the state, and the team that did beat them is sitting at home, and they're on their way to a state championship. Three wins away from a state championship, Tony. And then is Escambia, the 4A team, better than 5A Woodham? I uh, think the consensus is 4A is a better classification this year than 5A. It's That's what most of the experts around the state are saying. It sure looks like it, and if they can beat Escambia, they'll not only be 4A champs, they'll be number one in the county, Number one in the state. Southeast will be receiving, and we're ready to play as Bob Pitiera will kick off. Ed Brown is deep. A short kick, and it's taken on the 30-yard line. The up man finally brought down at about the 31-yard line. So a strange kick. Jonathan Jones picked it up, and the Seminoles will have it first and 10. Well, everybody's been kidding me that I'm going too far ahead, that we got to take one game at a time. But I'm waiting for the day that this team, Southeast, plays a, a full game, start right from the beginning. And every time I talk like that, that we're going to blow somebody out, they give us fits for a half. Let's see what they're going to do now with G. Brown. First and 10 on the 30-yard line. George Brown quarterbacking. Pitch back to Ed Brown, but we've already got flags. That'll give us a chance to set that Southeast offense. George Brown, the quarterback. George had a great game last week, six out of eight, 150 yards. He was the group W player of the game. In the backfield, Stanley Boyd and Ed Brown. Of course, Earl Hines will see plenty of action. The wideouts, Jesse Price, who had an outstanding game last week. And Kevin Daniels, Ed Purvis is the tight end. And across the front line, it's Frazier, Greenhall, White, Jones, and Newman. So it's a legal procedure on Southeast, Tony. It'll be first and 15. Ed Brown is the back man in the eye. Stanley Boyd is the up man. Draw play. Ed Brown has good running room. Brown has about 10 yards as he's out to the 35-yard line. Give him 10 yards. Ed Brown. John Kike, a former athletic director here at uh, Southeast High, was saying to me, he's wondering how the cold weather will affect them. None of the teams have... Uh, handle the ball in cold weather. That's East Coast and West Coast. It is a little nippy tonight. Temperatures right now around 50 degrees. No real wind to speak of. It's calmed down quite a bit. It's second and five 
at the 35 yard line for Southeast. Stanley Boyd gets out about three yards. That's big Earl Hines in there at the fullback position. Earl and Stanley Boyd will alternate. Stanley will also play some tailback. Give him four yards, it'll be third and one. Ball on the 39 yard line, so it's Earl Hines and Ed Brown in the backfield now. George Brown, the quarterback. Brown keeps it, has a lot of running room as he scampers down the sidelines for a big gain. 22 yard pickup by George Brown on a quarterback keeper. Uh, this is the kind of start I've been waiting for. If these kids push this over, go right from beginning to end, they're going to show people a team that they haven't seen the likes of since those Titusville astronauts back in 1983. Pro set this time with Boyd and Brown in the backfield. First and 10 on the 42-yard line. Stanley Boyd gets his first carry of the game, and he gets some nice yardage around the right side. He's finally knocked out by Eric Clark. Well, Coach Mackley's theory is keep running the ball because there's less than can go wrong when you run the ball, and that's what he's doing. But just picture if he was to throw a pass right at this point. There's nobody would be looking for it. Look at these kids. There's nobody playing back. Official timeout. It's that's second and six. Boyd picked up four yards. There ain't a defensive man out there thinking pass. The man to watch on the Melbourne defense is Brian Hessinger. He's a 6'1", 200-pound senior linebacker and the leading tackler on the Bulldog squad. Second and six. George Brown gives off to Stanley Boyd. Stanley gets two yards over the left side of that line. He's brought down by number 53, Ed Clark. Clark is a fine sophomore linebacker, 6'2", 180-pound sophomore. Him and Wayman Bowden, the two-star sophomore linebackers tonight. I suppose we play in a 5-2 set. It looks more like an 11-man line. <laughs> they play well, the same be, defense. Now they're a little bit worried. They're thinking a little pass now. They spread out a little bit. Third and five. They play the same defense as Southeast does at 5-2. George Brown pitch back to Ed Brown. Brown has the first down and more. He's brought down at the 20-yard line. Pickup of 16 yards. Spotted a little bit short of the 20, about the 21 or two yard line. So a pickup of 15 yards by Ed Brown. I'll tell you this, we got to think of a nickname for that running uh, attack, those three backs. They are really proven. First and 10 for the Seminoles. Ed Brown again has a big, big hole over the left side of that line. Ed picks up eight yards. And I'll tell you, that southeast offensive line, Frazier and Greenhall on the left side, really firing out to open up that big hole. Uh, you remember in the pregame, I tell you, they're from the East Coast, and we beat everything they send over here from the East Coast. And I think we're going to see southeast like they should be looking all the way. Second and short. George will keep it. And he's running for the end zone. Touchdown! Oh, my. There is a team. That is a running attack. Three backs. You don't know what they're going to do. George Brown on a 17-yard burst has put the Seminoles out in front six to nothing. Extra point attempt by Tommy Warren. Snap is good. Hole is good. And the kick is good. So with 8.33 to play in the first period, Southeast has jumped out in front of Melbourne, 7-0. Tom Warren kicking off as the Seminoles have jumped out to a 7-0 lead. Warren gets a nice high kick taken by Jimmy Roberts back at the five-yard line. 
Roberts is upended at the 15-yard line. And this is what I mean. They got a full team. They got a kicking game. Tommy Warren, last week, kicked a 42-yard field goal to set a school record. They got everything going for them. That was Lothario Jones in on the stop. Lothario Jones. I haven't heard his name but twice this year. I'm glad to see he's getting into the action. And it's first and 10 on the 15-yard line for the Melbourne Bulldogs. Oh, my, Maurice Lee. Maurice is starting just like he did last week. No gain. The fullback, Jason Palmisano, had nothing. Palmisano's the fullback, 5'11", 180 pounds. He actually lost two yards. It's second and 12. He's in the backfield with Richard Franklin. Franklin is the deep man. He's the quickie. Quarterback keeper by Flanders. He gets nothing. Washington in on the stop. Let's set that Melbourne offensive backfield. Shorman Flanders is the quarterback, a 5'7", 155-pound junior. Richard Franklin, he's the scat back. He's rushed for over 1,000 yards this year. And Jason Palmisano is the fullback. Third and 11. So the Southeast defense already swarming on the first two plays. By the way, that scoring drive for the Seminoles, 75 yards. George Brown, the touchdown on a 17-yard run. Third and 11 from the 14. Back to throw. It's knocked down, and pass interference is going to be called as Washington went up and knocked the intended receiver. I was waiting for the flag. The referee couldn't find it. <laughs> he finally pulled it out of his pocket. The ball was just thrown up for grabs by Shorman Flanders. That's a big break for this Melbourne team because they would have been forced to kick deep in their own territory. That'll be a first down. Oh, and these kids from the East Coast come up to Manatee County. They get a lesson. They've sent five or six teams up this year, and man, we have just whipped every one of them. Flanders. Flags. Looks like we might have had some movement on the Melbourne offensive line. A cool night in Bradenton. Illegal procedure. That'll move them back five yards. In the pregame interview with Coach Mackley, I was talking to him. The kids tell me they want to be called the Bushwhackers. Uh, we've had some of the papers have been calling them the fire ants because they sting. The kids say, we don't sting, we whack them. And boy, do they whack them. First and 15 on the 24-yard line. Flanders hands off to the fullback. Two yards, that's and that's all for Paul Masano. Actually, these Seminole kids, the Southeast kids have a tradition. Uh, they're named after the Seminole Indian tribe, and when they were freshmen, I wrote about these kids, and I nicknamed them Billy Bowlegs and his band of marauding Seminoles. That's what they're talking about when they talk about bushwhacking. That was Doyce Jackson on the last tackle. Flanders wants to throw downfield. It's picked off. Intercepted by Iron Perkins. Perkins turned into a wide receiver and picked Flanders off. And the Seminoles will have it first and ten. Iron Perkins and those other defensive back are under tutelage of Herb Chappett. Herb Chappett was a great girls basketball coach, but he had a genius of a pass defense. They put him in as the defensive back coach here, and these Southeast kids are showing what good coaching can do. Boy, they've come a long way. First and ten, Boyd and Brown in the backfield behind George Brown. Ball on the 39-yard line. Pass out to Jesse Price. Price needs one block, and he got it. A nice gain all the way down to the 42-yard line. All of a sudden, Jesse Price has become a big threat. He had no touchdown passes going into the state playoffs last week. He grabbed two. And tonight, he grabs that pass and goes 15 yards down the sidelines. Ball's actually spotted on the 45. Before he was driven out of bounds, it's first and 10. 
Brown hand off to Ed Brown. Ed gets five yards. He was tackled that time by Bo Coughlin. Second and five. Jesse Price this past week had the flu. We were a little bit worried about him, but he looks to be all right. He's on the wide side. Daniels to the near side. I formation. Hand off back to Ed Brown, but they're going to signal George Brown down before he flipped it back. So there'll be a loss of a couple yards on the play, and we'll bring up a third and seven situation. I think this is a big play, a really big play, because Southeast has the momentum going now, and if they can get a first down here, they're going to keep that momentum going. Who's that hurt? 22, is that George Brent? No. Stanley Boyd is off the field, and it appears maybe to just have a cramp. He's holding his stomach area. We'll have to wait and see. Third and seven. Play action. George, is George throw. looks down. Phil has Kevin He's Daniels. Got it. He's got it. He's Kevin got it. stumbles inside the five-yard line. It'll be first and goal at the three. A 40-yard pass from George Brown to Kevin Daniels. Now Kevin Daniels comes into the picture. Kevin Daniels. That's what they needed to keep the momentum going. This is what I've been waiting them to see, a big first half for these Southeast kids. First and goal for the Seminoles, 4.30 to play in the first quarter. Ed Brown, he bangs ahead for a couple yards. And it'll be second down and goal from about the two-yard line. I'll tell you, up in the Panhandle and down in the Miami area, they talk about Manatee County. And they look at us like we're just a bunch of cowboys up here, and this is a cow town. That's why they say the kids are so tough, because they're lifting cows. Power backfield in this time. George is going to keep it. Touchdown, George Brown. So the Southeast Seminoles are pouring it on. The big play in that drive, a 40-yard pass from George Brown to Kevin Daniels. And George Brown runs in his second touchdown of the night. And right now, Tommy Warren will try to make it 14 to nothing. Good snap. Kick is up. And the kick is good. 3.47 to play in the first quarter. Southeast shutting out Melbourne, 14 to nothing. Tom Warren was banged up a little bit, but he appears to be okay as he booted in the extra point. And the score is 14 to nothing as Southeast has come out with fire in their eyes tonight. They may not want to be known as the fire ants, but they certainly have fire in their eyes. Kicking will be Rowell. Timmy Rowell as Tom Warren was knocked down on the extra point attempt and Rowell will kick off. There was a penalty, 15-yard unsportsmanlike penalty, and the ball was booted from the 45, and Heat Rao kicks it into the end zone. It'll be first and 10 at the 20-yard line for Melbourne. So Rao does his job with a 15-yard penalty, and Melbourne will have the ball at their 20-yard line. Let's set the Southeast defense, the 5-2 tremendous defense. Across that front five, James Ball, Deutsch Jackson, Earl Hines, Don Newman, and Maurice Lee, the linebackers. Wayman Bowden and Tom Washington on the corners. Iron Perkins has already picked off a pass tonight. And Steve Thomas for safeties. Jeff Hall and Dwight Sutton. <laughs> Quarterback Shorman Flanders. Flanders gives off to his scat back, Franklin. Franklin gets a couple yards before he's brought down. Joyce Jackson in on the tackle. And... Once again, Franklin is the man to watch. 5'5", 150-pound junior, averaging over seven yards a carry. 
He got four on that carry. And it's second and six. Flanders off to his big fullback, Palmisano, and he gets nothing. Joyce Jackson's right there to meet him. Palmisano slow to get up. I would be too if I met Joyce Jackson on the line of scrimmage. You meet Joyce Jackson. I may not get up. I may just say, hey, get me out of here. Joyce Jackson, Don Newman, uh, it don't matter who, Tommy uh, Washington, Wayman Bowden, when they hit you, they whack you. Third and six, no gain on the last play. I formation. Flanders wants to throw. Rolling. And, oh, missed tackle. It's picked off. Iron Perkins. His second interception of the night, and Perkins is all over the football field. That's that Herb Shappett, the genius. Defensive coach. Heavy pressure was being put on Flanders by the front five. They chased him out of the pocket. He threw the interception. It's first and ten on the 40-yard line, and Southeast is threatening to make this game a blowout early. Pitch back to Ed Brown. Ed running left, stops, cuts inside, and picks up three yards. He made three yards out of nothing as he was about ready to be tackled for a loss. Two minutes to play, of course, across town tonight at Hawkins Stadium, Manatee High, going after a victory in the sectionals. Manatee playing West Palm Beach Forest Hill, and the way things are shaping up, sports fans, it might be Bradenton against Pensacola. Ah, that's going to be the day. Oh, will that be a big night? Second and seven. Ball on the 37-yard line. Stanley Boyd carries right up the middle, but he's met at the line of scrimmage by Joe Coleman and driven back. Well, it's a funny thing about these East Coast of, I know you're from the East Coast of Florida, Dave, but Sam Cornwell, my boss, always talks about the East Coast of Florida, and he says they're all Yankees over there. Now you come over here and you're going to meet real Floridians. What are you? I've been a Yankee, but I'm a <laughs> Northern Rebel. <laughs> Third and seven. I formation for George Brown. Straight up the middle and pick up of maybe, maybe a yard or two for Boyd, but that'll uh, bring up a fourth down situation. Hey, if Southeast has a Palmetto 50 uh, play, or are they going to try that field goal? Ball's on the 35 yard line. They will, they'll probably punt it away, and they will with Tim Rowell in the game. He had a 42-yard uh, field goal last week. I'd like to see him try for a record, you know? Yeah, this would have been a 52-yarder. Boy, that would have been something for the kid. Rowell gets a nice high kick. And let's see, it bounces, and it's down inside the 10-yard line. Good kick by Rowell. You know, he kicks very well when he's inside his 50-yard line, very Tim well. Tim Rowell and Tommy Warren, Bill Nisley is the coach of these kids. And he's just got them really, and you got to remember, both kids are spacemen. I don't know why they call them. I think they're interested in space. <laughs> Maybe they should go and talk to these Melbourne kids. They're over there close to... Right, I like, bet they Cape do. They're, they're <laughs> two of them are very interested in space. Paul spotted on the eight-yard line. Rao with a tremendous kick. And that'll do it for the first quarter. So Southeast totally dominating Melbourne in the first 12 minutes. We're sponsoring tonight's game on Group W, the Bradenton Herald, Bill Graham Ford, Bradenton Lincoln Mercury, Poucher Pontiac Cadillac, the County Bank, Wicks Lumber, Anderson Lawnmowers, and Coast Federal. As Group W brings you through the state playoffs. We'll be back with you next week, it looks like. Of course, we still have three quarters to play. Southeast out in front, 14 to nothing on Two running touchdowns by quarterback George Brown. Right now it's first and ten on the eight for Melbourne. Handoff up the middle to Palisano. He gets about three yards, maybe four. Palmasano, the junior fullback, gets four yards, and it's second and six. 
Well, when those bushwhackers get them down inside the 10 yard line, they're supposed to cause a fumble and get a defensive score. I mean, if they want to keep that name bushwhacker, they got to really whack them hard to get that. High formation. Shorman Flanders, the quarterback. He gives off to Franklin. Franklin has some room. It's the uh, longest gain of the night. Franklin gets out close to the first down. Let's see where the ball is spotted. It'll be third and short. Third and one. A cool night tonight. Temperature's supposed to get down to 40. Right now, I'd say it's right around the 50 degree mark. Third and one, Franklin's met behind the line of scrimmage. Wayman Bowden got in there. Tremendous defense by Bowden, that's a big play as Melbourne will be forced to kick the ball away. What a hit by Wayman Bowden. And as a Franklin little, didn't have any time to breathe. As a little sophomore, Wayman. Yeah, just a little sophomore. Six foot, 190. 193. We're going to hear a lot of high snaps. They got a score. They and got a the, score. They he'll did take it. it into the end zone. It'll be a safety. They did it. Now, as are they the bushwhackers that aren't they? If they can score on defense just the way I said they would, we got to name them the bushwhackers. 16 to nothing. Dave, the I think we ought to let the audience in on the fact that we've been kidding about fire ants and all. See, when Tommy Washington was 10 years old, he was practicing along with the other Vikings over behind the church, Church of God, on 26th Avenue and 43rd Street. And it was filled with fire ants, but it was a rainy day, and every time these kids would get the fire ants on them, they'd run and jump in this big puddle. And when we were there, when the papers were called for the fire ants, all we could think of was those days with the Vikings and the Eagles, when the kids would jump in the puddle to get rid of the fire ants. <laughs> Dave, you say I'm really rolling tonight, uh, right? Yeah, you, <laughs> rare form tonight. You said to me, uh, boy, you're really feeling good, Tony. <laughs> I, well, I was feeling good when I walked in here. <laughs> Anybody comes over on the East Coast and tries to play against us, we got to eat them up. And it looks to me like a state championship if we can get past Escambia at the end of this thing. Boy, once again, Irod Perkins was in there, and he's played a whale of a football game. Two interceptions. He's all over the football field, and... Pertiero will kick now. He gets a log kick taken by Ed Brown back at the 22-yard line. Brown straight up the middle of the field, and he bowls forward near the 50-yard line. It's right on the 48, where Southeast will have good field position once again. I'll tell you, Brent Wilford, the punter for Melbourne, didn't have a chance. The kick was didn't even have a chance to kick it. The snap was a little bit high, and... The Seminole defense was all over him. He did the wise thing. Rather than try to punt it and Southeast recovered for a touchdown, he got the safety, and it's 16 to nothing. Derek Frazier is wide to the far side. George Brown, the quarterback, gives off to Stanley Boyd. Boyd gets four yards over the right side. 9.36 to play in the first half as Southeast is just completely controlling the defensive and offensive lines and really just blowing this Melbourne team away so far. Melbourne hasn't showed anything. Well, in my column of the Braden and Harrell, well, you better take this G. Brown's behind the center. Take him Second and six, I formation. Brown gives to Ed Brown. Ed has a lot of running room and he has the first down and more. A 10-yard pickup for Ed Brown. Well, as I was saying in my column in the Braden and Harrow, I wrote that they got to go out and win one for the old-timers. Guys like Bryce Farmer, Troy Hamilton. In 1983, they had a team that came within five points of the Manatee County State Championship team, went over to Titusville and got beat by an East Coast team. And this is just sort of, we'll pay you back a little bit. First and 10 from the 40. Pitch back to Ed Brown once again, running left. Ed brought down by number 55. 
Brian Hessinger. He's the best defensive player on the Melbourne team, but not before Ed picked up good yardage. It'll be second down and short. And you know, Tony, if Southeast wins tonight, it'll be the farthest they've ever advanced in the state playoffs. Right. right They'll go into the semifinal game next week. Well, and tell you what was great about uh, Coach Mackley this week mentioning Bryce Farmer and these old timers. That team in 83 was so good, it was unbelievable. They were like this, but they ran into a buzzsaw at Titusville. Well, if you're wondering what is ahead for the Southeast Seminoles, by the way, Ed Brown got a first down. He rushed for 10 yards. If Southeast wins tonight, they'll play the winner of the Fort Lauderdale-Dillard-Stranahan game. That's Fort Lauderdale-Stranahan. So two teams from Fort Lauderdale going at it tonight. And those two teams would play in the semifinals. The winner of tonight's game and the winner of that Fort Lauderdale game. And then o Ocala Force is playing Escambia tonight, and Arbondale is playing Tarpon Springs. That Escambia-Ocala Force should be a sensational game. Ed Brown running right side this time. Brown has a first down, and now he's running for the end zone. Touchdown, Ed Brown. A 29-yard touchdown run by Ed Brown. And Southeast continues to pour it on. Oh, and these fans here are driving me crazy. John Hubbard and Sonny Woods, they keep showing me that Southeast 21 Manatee 7 t-shirt that they wear. Boy, do they drive you nuts with that stuff. Let's give credit to the right side of that line. Jonathan Jones and Don Newman and the center Reggie White pulling to give that good blocking to let Ed Brown go 29 yards. A bad snap. Rao picks it up, throws it down near the end zone, flags all over the field. That's and my little spaceman. <laughs> That's my spaceman, Tim Rao. <laughs> he put that into orbit, didn't he? He got a penalty flag. We'll have to wait and see what it's all about. No harm in doing that, of course. Oh, we're talking about the old timers. You know, Southeast had guys like Melvin Burston played here, Steve Cucci. And you see these guys in the crowd. I saw Cucci earlier. During the year, he comes to the games, and boy, they're rooting for these kids just as much as if they were out there playing themselves. There's a holding call on the Southeast Seminoles, so Southeast will kick off with a 22 to nothing lead. Completely dominating this football game. You know, you know, this reminds me of last week's game up at Florida Field with Florida State and Florida. The Gators came out and just simply poured it on a Florida State team, which was a very respectable team, but... You won't let me forget that, will you, Dave? <laughs> I had to get that plug in for the Gators. They did it through the air tonight. Southeast doing it on the ground, but the domination is similar. It's total. I heard a phone ring. I think Ed Kirchner just canceled your insurance. <laughs> yeah. You're going to keep up with this. I Florida see that around to town. That. <laughs> My wife's got a name for the Seminoles, but I can't say it over the air. <laughs> She's a bigger gator than I am. Tom Warren gets a high kick taken back at the five yard line. Out, there's a penalty flag as the ball is taken to the 25 yard line. See what the flag's all about. You know, people would really get a kick up north if they saw pictures of this. Here we are in the middle of Florida. It's about 40 degrees, and the kids have those big wraps on down there. They're freezing. It's cold. Your blood thins when you're down here. Big penalty on Melbourne brings it back half the distance as a clip on the run back and again Melbourne finds itself in a tough spot first and ten on the 12 yard line Shorman Flanders trying to get some offense going for Melbourne hand off to the fullback picks up a yard but he's stopped right there by Doyce Jackson you know those bushwhackers are supposed to score if they get them inside the 10. Now on the 12-yard line, will the defense score? Do we give them that two yards and make them score there too? 
be second and eight. Franklin and Palmasano. That's Marvin Jordan catching the pass from Shorman Flanders. He's brought down by Iron Perkins. Pick up a seven yards. Ball's on the 20 yard line, so it'll be third down and short. Third and about two yards to go for the first down. You know, you were saying I'm on a roll tonight. You know, I'm feeling good. I don't know what it is. I've been feeling good for the last three or four days. I just feel really up about things. This is football season. This is what I love. You know, when you get to the playoffs and the big games, and we're winning. Flanders calling the signals. The Seminole defensive players jumping around. No gain. Tommy and Washington, Washington meets Palmasano and drives him back. That'll bring up a fourth down. What tremendous defense by Tommy Washington. He busted across the line. You know, Tommy Washington's been a mainstay here at Southeast on defense. Now, he's got a kid brother, Elliot Washington, and he could be another George Brown. I haven't seen him play any high school ball yet. But I can remember when he was four or five years old, picking him up, with, hanging on one finger. But let's get back to this game. Kicking the ball, Brent Wilford, the last time the snap went over his head. This time it's a good kick. And Wilford gets the kick off. George Brown takes it at the 40-yard line. George still on his feet. And he returns at six yards. It'll be first and 10. George will stay in there and direct the Seminole offense as Southeast continues to have tremendous field position. But uh, I was talking about Elliott Washington. I'll tell you, he was just amazing. He looked like George Brown in that youth football league. He really did a job. First and 10 on the 46-yard line. 5.48 to play in the half. Southeast shutting out Melbourne, 22 zip. It's been all Seminoles from Southeast Stadium. Brown gives off to Boyd. Stanley bangs ahead for a yard. Tough running inside that time for Boyd. Kempfer in on the stop. George Kempfer. They got two Kempfers. They've got George Kempfer and Henry Kempfer. They got a couple of brother combinations on this Melbourne team. Second and nine on the 47-yard line. This time a single setback for the Southeast Seminoles. Brown wants to throw, looks downfield, has Ed Brown. Brown has a first down, he's zipping down the sidelines. All the way down inside the 15 yard line goes Ed Brown. Tremendous speed. Ball spotted on the 10 yard line. What a play by Ed Brown. What a throw by G. Brown, too. I mean, that kid is just a magician. They lined up Ed Brown on the slot, and Ed caught the little pass out in the flat, and he was history down the sidelines, finally driven down at the 10 yard line. It's first and goal. Ed Brown has the pitch right, and he stopped, fumble, but let's see if he's ruled down. I think they give no it. No signal yet. Referee still hasn't given a signal, and he, now he does. He's down. The Melbourne fans, of course, don't like the call. The Southeast fans are ecstatic about it. I tell you, after close to a touchdown pass, I think they try to give it to Ed now, you know, on that run. Ed actually picked up a yard. It's second and goal from the nine yard line. George Brown. Stanley Boyd, touchdown! Everyone's getting in the act for the Seminoles. Nine yard touchdown for Stanley Boyd. And it's 28 to nothing.
Warren to attempt the extra point. Good snap, good hold. Good kick, 29 nothing. 3.47 to go in the half. Southeast out in front. Tom Warren kicks it, and the Melbourne player, Jimmy Roberts, is down. And once again, Melbourne will have awful field position. I'm going to run out of adjectives to use tonight, Tony. You know, it must be tough for these people to take that bus ride over from the East Coast. It's going to be a tougher ride back. <laughs> the ride over here. First and 10 on the 12-yard line. We just got word that Brian Hessinger, the fine linebacker for Melbourne, was injured, and he's being put in the ambulance over on the far side, and that's a big loss as things are not going too well tonight. That's an understatement for Melbourne. Hessinger is a fine, fine linebacker, leading tackler on the team. Meanwhile, Melbourne gains one yard on the first down dive, and it's second and nine on the 13-yard line. Sharman Flanders quarterbacking. Gives it off to Franklin. Nothing. That Southeast defense is right there. Don Newman. Boy, Maurice Lee, Newman, Hines, Jackson, and Ball. Just an outstanding front five. Then they're backed up by Washington and Bowden at the linebacking position. No weaknesses out there. Good big number, Doyce, number 99, Doyce Jackson at the left tackle. Doyce putting all sorts of pressure on Flanders. Flanders is sacked. Jackson turned him in, and Wayman Bowden got the sack. Boy, oh boy. Melbourne might be thinking about throwing in the flag. The white one. Isn't that the color you throw in? Well, usually, you want to call it off? Usually, uh, you said the flag you threw me because in the ring they towel. throw in the towel. towel. Okay. Yeah, I remember that towel. I always throw it in when I was in there. <laughs> Fourth and 13. Another punt. It's over his head. Wolford didn't have a chance. Oh, my. Everything going wrong for Melbourne. And if you get within the 10 yard line, the Bushwhackers have to score. That's part of the contract. 31 to nothing. I can picture Scotty Taylor coming up to me and saying, yeah, Tony, are we a first quarter <laughs> team or aren't we? Haven Simmons from Channel 40 is getting some tremendous highlights for his show at 11 o'clock. Boy, he's had a little bit of everything. He's all smiles down there. Why not? I have to get home in time to watch it, the highlights of this first half tonight. 31 to nothing. A minute 36 still to play in the first half. And once again, Melbourne has a free kick. Bob Pertiero will kick. And Ed Brown is back deep along with Jesse Price. Price will grab this at the 29 yard line. Jesse starts upfield, has good running room. Jesse finally brought down on the 50-yard line. The Seminoles will have it first and 10 on the 50-yard line. Wouldn't surprise me to see Paul Meckley start using a couple reserves, probably a little bit early for that, but it's 31 to nothing. George Brown, still the quarterback. George wants to throw. Looks downfield. And we may have a flag, but we don't. Boy, oh boy, the intended receiver was I'll number 21, you, Derek Frazier. If it wasn't 31 to nothing, we might have seen a flag on that one. But with the score, 31 to... Covering back on the play was Jimmy Roberts, and he got his feet tangled 
with Derek Frazier, and if that wasn't interference, I don't know. You know what these kids love? The Palmetto 50. You know that flea flicker uh, play? They call it a because Palmetto Because Palmetto 50. burned it on them several years ago. And they're having fun right now. I wouldn't be surprised to see them do it just for the fun of it. Brown's going to throw. Watch Jesse Price. Jesse Price caught the football, I believe. No. No, they rule it incomplete. Boy, you know, oh, boy. The kid, uh, the kid on defense stayed right with him. He had the ball in his hands, but he also had the kid's hands. Marvin Jordan, great defense, but what a throw by Brown. And Price had it on his fingertips, and we were blocked by the Seminole players, and he must have lost it when he fell to the ground. Yeah, the other guy had his fingers right in there. I, I just looked down there where the guy with the camera is. I could just see his hand in there with the, uh, the other guys, with the Price's hands. Third and ten. All of a sudden, Southeast going to the air. Draw play. Ed Brown. Has the first down, I believe. He's right at the marker. Let's see where the referee spots it. First down, Ed Brown with a 10-yard draw play. First and 10 at the 40. This gives Paul Meckley a chance to try some different things right now. And right now he's going to try some throwing. Jesse Price has it. Price is driven out of bounds. About the 31 yard line by Jimmy Roberts. You know that Palmetto 50 day talk about, that was John Nobles, the quarterback over there. He quarterbacked for about three years there. And he was one kid that they really depended on. That was a pickup of nine, Tony, on that play. And Nobles had hit Beard, and then they'd throw it back. Oh, they had some team with Mike Lamline. And Southeast has taken that play and perfected it this year. Second and one on the 31-yard line. Play action. Brown trying to set up a screen. What as a Ed screen. Brown. Ed is hit by about three Melbourne players. <laughs> but he has the first down, and the Seminoles call a timeout. Pick up of about three or four yards, good enough for the first down. Didn't get the big play they wanted, but did get enough for the first down. 13 seconds to play in the half. Southeast wants to get on the scoreboard again before halftime. You know, with Southeast blowing these kids out, and Manatee is blowing out the other team over there. They are. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah they they, they got to have at least 20 points. I mean, they got to. These kids from the East Coast can't play with us. <laughs> And uh, Tony Conboy in rare form well, tonight. We'll see. We'll see. I, I say at the quarter, we'll find out we were at least 20 points ahead. Boy, he is fired up. <laughs> we might want to suit him up. But I feel sorry for the Bayshore and the Palmetto kids that are sitting home and not playing. You know, I sent a cake over, Dave. Did you hear about I, it? I saw that today, Tony, about your cake. Why yeah. didn't you send me a piece? Well, you're going to all the games, <laughs> you know. And the Bayshore kids, I feel sorry for them. You know, they had a great year. Palmetto won the district. Space had a great year. But it'd be nice if we could play nothing but kids from the East Coast. <laughs> First and 10 on the 26 yard line. 13 seconds to play. Jesse Price wide to the near side. Brown wants Price, has him. Jesse spins away from one tackler and gets out of bounds. Good move by Jesse Price. And that might bring on the field goal team as Jesse's inside the 20 at the 19 yard line. Eight seconds to play and Paul Meckley won't send his field goal unit in. He'll try to run another play with eight seconds. Brown throws downfield and should be a flag on that and there is. Who's he going to call it against, though? Yeah, it'll, it'll be pass interference against Melbourne as Kevin Daniels was streaking down the right side. Oh! That's what I oh said. Oh, my, Who it's on Daniels. It hey, that's what I said. Who are they going to call it against? I thought it was so pa obvious. That no, pass interference is a play that announcers even on TV try to call. You know, you watch it, the uh, NFL, they try to call it, and it's foolish. Because it's all in that guy's head, especially when it's 31 to nothing. <laughs> they collided. 
Daniels didn't have a chance to catch the ball, and he gets the pass interference call. So a couple of questionable calls, but, you know, when the score is 31 to nothing. Boy, oh, boy. If they doing nothing, I would have gave it to the kid, too. We're going to have a long <laughs> field goal attempt. It'll be a 50-yard attempt. Beautiful, beautiful. By Tom Warren. I think 42 is the school record. Row the holder. Two seconds to play. Let's see if Warren can get it. He's got a lot of leg, but it'll be a little short. You think they got a piece of that the way that took off? Warren is hurting, though. He was injured in the first half, and he's down. He's getting back up, but that'll do it for the first half. Wait a minute. We might have a flag on the play. There is a flag. There is a flag sitting down there, so that might move it up a few more yards, and Warren may get another 10. Well, I think they'll probably just try another field goal. They'll move it up 10 yards or 15 yards. And if he's hurt, he can hold and Raul can kick. Be a running into the kicker, and it will be a 15-yard penalty, so Tom Bourne will have another chance. Paul Meckley has called timeout, so we'll take a break. No time remaining. We'll be back with the final play of the half right after this. Back at Southeast Stadium, where the Seminoles are routing Melbourne 31 and nothing. The Bulldogs have 15 yards of total offense on six plays. That gives you some indication of what kind of game it's been. Southeast leading 31 zip and Southeast will try another field goal attempt. Tom Warren. This time it'll be a 35 yarder for Tommy. Rowell, the holder. Snap is good. Kick is up. It's got enough distance, and it's good! 35-yard field goal at the buzzer. Puts Dave, Southeast out in front, 34-zip. That kid has turned into one of the best kickers. I mean, Andy Elton has had the, uh, the honors and the accolades all year. He's going to Ohio State a bit. Some college better start looking at this kid. Tom Warren with a 35-yarder. Southeast leads at halftime, 34-0. We'll be back with our halftime show right after this. Back at Southeast Stadium as we're getting ready for the second half kickoff. Total domination in the first half by the Southeast Seminoles. The Seminoles out on top, 34 to nothing. Melbourne couldn't get a thing going. 15 yards of total offense, Tony, for Melbourne. And really, Southeast has looked as good as it's looked all year. No question about that. Well, I met a couple of Melbourne fans when I was... Uh, they still out, of the, out of the booth for a while, and they told me, now you'll see the adjustments. This is where coaching comes in. It's the second half, and you'll see us start moving. Tom Warren will kick off. Well, they're going to have to make quite a few adjustments to get 34 points and get back into this football game. Tom Warren kicks off, and Jimmy Roberts has it at the 10-yard line. Roberts is driven down at the 20 by number 32, Kevin Zanobi. And Melbourne will have it first and 10 as the Southeast band goes by after another fine performance at halftime. Well, I tell you, I love that trumpet playing by Robbie Sercu. You know, he was one of the best little league players, uh, baseball players that we had around. And all of a sudden, he ended up in a trumpet, and he's given us that Harry James touch. And for an old timer like me, it's great. We're underway on Group W. Playoff action, Southeast and Melbourne. Little pass out to Roberts. Roberts gets nothing, really. He, may be, he might have lost a yard as the Southeast defense was spread out. Dwight Sutton come up from a strong safety to make the stop. And Southeast is all over the football field, defensively and offensively. That was actually a two-yard loss. Brings up a second and 12 situation. Temperatures continue to fall. We got to be near 40 degrees now. Feels like it's 20 below. Second and 12. Flanders gives off to Franklin. Franklin, good running room. That's the longest gain of the night as it's a first down for Melbourne. 
Well, it was a 14-yard pickup. That was a good adjustment. However, they did that. Bushwhackers don't usually let people do that to them. Richard Franklin has rushed for over 1,000 yards, and he's Richard, only a junior. Isn't that something? 1,000 yards, you get very few backs in high school getting that much yardage. Flanders off to his fullback, Palmasano, but he's stopped right there by Doyce Jackson. I don't think we had a 1,000 yard back in this uh, county, did we? 900 and something was... Uh, Ed Brown was the leading rusher. Yeah, and uh, Gaskins, I guess, with the playoffs, has come up to about 900 Well, I think Brown well, has over 1,000 now with the playoffs. Oh, but with the playoffs, he's got it. But right? not in the regular season. This guy yeah. got in the regular season. Second and 11, loss of a yard on that play. Flanders gives off to Franklin. Runs into Tommy Washington. Franklin gets a couple yards before tackled by Washington. Also, Don Newman in on the tackle. It'll bring up a third and seven situation. Well, I'm sitting here with a front line jacket and a sweater and a shirt, and I see you in that shirt. You're beginning to shake a little there, Dave. A little chilly. <laughs> Is Tony Edwards here tonight? I haven't seen him. Third and seven for Flanders and company. Play action. Flanders wants to run. He stopped. Wayman Bowden tripped him up. And that'll bring up a punting situation. There's always one of those bushwhackers waiting. You see him cut him off right at the pass. The wind's starting to pick up, too. <laughs> The colds will make you irritable wounded, Dave. <laughs> Fourth and five. It's all that warm weather that we had. It kind of spoiled us all, I think. It's a fake punt. But it hits nothing as it was fumbled by Marvin Jordan. And right in on the play, number four, Jeff Hall. So nothing Melbourne has done tonight has worked. Absolutely nothing. Well, I'll tell you, though, I give that coach credit. Pull out all the stops. Oh, you have to. What yeah. do you got to well, lose? I'll tell you, that, that I respect the guy. He's trying right up to the last minute. I talked to Coach Tom McIntyre earlier in the week, and a great guy, and he was confident coming into this game that his team could stay right with Southeast, but it hasn't been the case. Well, the First and 10 on the 29 for the Seminoles. George Brown keeps it for three yards off right tackle. Actually, those East Coast teams don't realize yet how powerful Manatee is. I think they will after tonight. Yeah, I think they will. Uh, by the way, I wasn't exactly right. Uh, it wasn't 20 to nothing back in the first quarter. At halftime, it was only 14 nothing in the first quarter. Manatee's blowing the other team out. I heard 25-7 a few minutes ago at half. Well, now they're getting into my category. Second and seven. George Brown quarterbacking. He's already rushed for two touchdowns. He'll keep it. He has a little bit of room. He gets about three yards. He's brought down by Ed Clark. You know, with this cold weather, my wife won't believe how happy I am and how good I'm feeling. But all week long, I have just been feeling so good. It is the season to be jolly. I even ended a column in the Braden and Herald with those words. And I felt so good. You know that Dave Hale, Doug Hale? Doug right? Hale. Doug Dave Hale, Hall and Doug Hale. They confuse yeah. you. That Doug Hale, our producer, he comes up with some real sharp comments every now and then. <laughs> Third and two for the Seminoles. Off to Ed Brown. Brown is probably maybe an inch or two short of the first down. Good defense that time by number 80, Bo Coglin. Defensive end for the Melbourne Bulldogs. Fourth down situation and short. It'll be about a yard for the I first down in the crowd. Go. The I'd crowd rather, wants him to go. I'd rather see him go for a field goal and let this kid Tommy show what uh, Bill Misley has taught those guys. Earl Hines is in the backfield. Misdirection to Stanley Boyd. He has the first down and more. Wow. Touchdown, Stanley Boyd. Wow. Well, you were talking about coaching. You knew what you were talking about.
That's Boyd's second touchdown of the night. A 19-yard run. Warren into attempt the extra point. It's up, but it's good. 41 to nothing, 617 to play in the third period, and we'll take a break. Warren kicking off. Back deep, Marvin Jordan for Melbourne. 41 nothing southeast. Good long kick. Taken by Franklin. He fumbles the ball into the end zone. It'll be a touchback. First and 10 for Melbourne at the 20-yard line. If you're wondering about next week, what will happen, it's about time to think about next week. Score 41 to nothing. Fort Lauderdale Dillard and Fort Lauderdale Stranahan playing tonight. Of course, this game is tape delayed and brought to you on a Monday night, so you'll know all about this, so I don't even know why I'm talking about it. But in any event, Southeast will host Dillard if Dillard wins tonight. Meanwhile, the Melbourne quarterback is brought down for a sack but getting back to next week, Stranahan and Dillard play tonight. If Dillard wins, Southeast will host Dillard. If Stranahan wins, Southeast will go on the road to play Fort Lauderdale Stranahan. So if they're over in Fort Lauderdale, I don't know what the chances that Group W will bring you the game. I have no idea. I don't think we go across the state, do we, Tony? Well, I, I don't know either, but uh, if they don't, I'm going. <laughs> But Dillard is favored in that game, so chances are we'll be right back here next week. Second and 13 as Shorman Flanders was brought down for a three-yard loss. 5.35 to play. Flanders drops back, now wants to run, and he's met by Doyce Jackson and creamed after maybe a pickup of a yard. You know, my son was up from Miami, and uh, I was telling him to watch this defense, and he watched it, and I said, do you see anything different? He says, Dad, the only thing different is, is they're bigger, tougher, and stronger than the other kids you've seen. It's a 5-2. It says nothing unusual, nothing different about it. Just they're better. And he played for Mooney. He hates to give them credit over at Southeast. Third and 11, ball on the 19. Flanders over the middle, incomplete. Intended receiver, Dom Eckhoff. Eckhoff looking for a flag on Washington, but nothing doing. That'll bring up a punting situation. This regional football playoff game is sponsored by the Florida High School Activities Association. This association is presently composed of 564 high schools that have voluntarily united themselves for the purpose of supervising and directing interscholastic contests. The interscholastic activities program is designed to serve both participants and spectators. Students learn from travel, from other young people of similar age and experience, and from visiting other schools. Interschool activities in all cases should be planned with emphasis on educational values. The opportunities to develop physically, morally, and socially are added desirable bonuses. As a result of this program, an estimated 250,000 junior and senior high school students annually benefit directly or indirectly from their school's membership in the Florida High School Activities Association. Wow. And that's a mouthful. I guess you had to be a real professional <laughs> newscaster to do those kind of announcements. Huh? It, How helps, to read the, it they helps to read the news every morning. They, yeah. never, they never hand uh, me things like that. <laughs> How come? Fourth and 11, kicking Brent Wilford. Wilford gets a good snap this time. Gets off a pretty decent kick. Jesse Price will take it. He drops it, picks it up. Reverses field, slips, and is finally brought down. George Kempfer in on the stop, and it'll be first and 10 for the Seminoles at the 41-yard line. They still have good field position. I think this is about the point where they ought to send somebody over to that coach and ask him if he wants the clock to keep running. I'll go for that. Why don't you go ask him, Tony? Derek Frazier in the game, playing a wide receiver. He's wide to the near side. Quarterbacking, George Brown, first and 10 from the 42-yard line. Brown runs an option, 
He fumbles the ball, but he falls on it. Loss of about six or seven yards. I think at this point, uh, a team has to have a letdown. They can't keep that enthusiasm up. If they throw, everybody will say they're running the score up. So they have to run the ball and run out the clock now, you know? Well, I would think the first string would play out this quarter, and then he'll get Pat Carnegie in the quarterback and get some of the other youngsters in. Second and 17, I formation. Brown, play action. Looks downfield. It's picked off. Sean Kelly gets down past the 40-yard line, down to the 37-yard line. Kelly picked off the pass. That ball floated a little bit on George. Yeah, well, I think, as I said, the letdown is there. You know, they got the points, and they got the game, and they're letting down. Well, I saw the la same thing last week. I hate to keep bringing that Florida State-Florida game up, but yeah, Florida had a little bit of letdown in the third period, then bounced back to keep rolling over the Seminoles. You thought about bringing the kids in, uh, Carnegie, and the, they have a kid. I don't know whether they ever moved them up to varsity or not. They had a J little JV quarterback was terrific. Flanders wants to throw. Incomplete intended receiver Jimmy Roberts back on the coverage. Number 14, John Richardson in the game, getting some playing time. They had that Steve Pollock playing JV. Uh, I'd like to see them put a kid like that in. He's real young. And Holding call on Melbourne. That'll bring the ball back. Again, Melbourne just can't get anything going. Yeah, I, Boy, I, a long night for Coach Tom McIntyre and his staff and his players and his fans, his radio announcers down the way from us. Yeah, I wish you would have reminded me that his announcers were sitting close by. I would have been a, less, <laughs> a little less uh, uh, cocky about the things <laughs> I've been saying. I think they're down far enough from us. They can't reach over and hit you or anything. <laughs> First and 25, big 15-yard holding penalty. Flanders back to throw. Draw play to Franklin. He has good running room. Franklin gets down to the 45-yard line. Actually down to the 41-yard line before he was tackled by Washington. Second and 13. Clock continues to wind down. 2.30 to go in the third period. I wouldn't mind to see that clock keep going and call this a night. Second and 13. Nothing as Washington hammered Marvin Jordan. Jordan got it on a little reverse and nothing doing. Well, my son was home, Chris, from uh, St. Thomas University. We were watching one of these games. And he looked at Slab Hamilton. See how I got Slab in there again? Each week I got to talk about him. But he said, that can't be little Robbie Hamilton that won the pass kick and punt contest. I said, yep, that's him. Little 273-pound Slab Hamilton. Screenplay off to Palmisano, but he gets nothing as that Southeast defense is up there. Yeah, all Chris could remember was uh, when Slab was, uh, I guess he was 11 years old, and I, I bet he didn't weigh over 100 pounds then. Good defense by Dwight Sutton. Dwight getting ready for basketball season. I understand he's an outstanding hoops player. Fourth down, Melbourne going for it. The throw downfield, it's broken up beautifully by Jeff Hall. Uh, all the kidding I did with that Herb Chaffet defensive back coach about being a genius, and it all started by mistake. I meant to write in a column in the Brandon Herald that it, he was a genius at trivia games, and somehow or other in the editing it came out, the guy's a genius. So he's been having people put that on his license plate at the school here. 
They hang things on his locker, the genius. All the other coaches are ribbing him. But they have done a heck of a job. What a coaching staff, huh? Faust Alasia has been known for defense for years. First and 10 on the 41. Brown gives off to Boyd. Well, the sad Pick up a five. The sad thing is, as soon as they get the ball in their hand, they're capable of scoring another touchdown, you know? And uh, you can't tell them not to play hard. Stanley Boyd and Ed Brown in the backfield. Second and five. Third quarter winding down. Ed Brown keeps it. Has the first down. Ed Brown picks up good yardage. Brought down by Dom Eckhoff. George showed good quickness. And that should be the last play in the third quarter. As it's first and 10 on the 44-yard line. Southeast is in Melbourne territory once again. They've been there quite often tonight. And that'll do it for third quarter action. We'll be back with the final 12 minutes right after this. Back at Southeast Stadium, Dave Bristow and Tony Conboy bring you high school playoffs on Group W. 41 to nothing, Southeast leading Melbourne as we get the final 12 minutes underway. George Brown and the Seminoles. Hand off to Ed Brown. Ed gets three yards over the right side, left side. It'll be second and seven. Well, you know, if you look at that southeast backfield, Tony, you got Ed Brown, who led the county in rushing this year, rushed for 941 yards in the regular season. You got Stanley Boyd, who rushed for 636 yards in the regular season, and then Earl Hines, who rushed for over 600 yards, not to mention George Brown. He just got a tremendous, tremendous running attack. And that offensive line, of course, blocks well. That time, Stanley Boyd carried the ball for a couple of yards. Sometimes I think folks around the county forget a little bit about the play of the offensive line, just like they do in any kind of football. But uh, that offensive line for Southeast and Manatee, both tremendous offensive lines. That Southeast offensive line, Frazier, Greenhall, White, Jones, and Big Don Newman. They do a great job, and Ed Purvis, the tight end. Third and four. Pitch back to Ed Brown. Ed has the first down. It'll be first and 10 for the Southeast Seminoles as they continue to roll. They've got a pretty big offensive line, too. Frazier goes 248. Greenhall 215, White 240. The small guy in that line is John Jones at 176. But everybody else is over 200 pounds. I was running through my mind is trying to think up a, a name for those backs that you just were talking about. Paul Mackley said we got the Bushwhackers and now think up a name for the backs. Stanley Boyd gets six yards. High school football on Group W. Uh -huh. Brought to you by the Bradenton Herald, Bill Graham Ford, Bradenton Lincoln Mercury, Poucher, Pontiac Cadillac, the County Bank, Wicks Lumber, Anderson Lawn Mowers, and Coast Federal. Wicks Lumber Company. Hey, that reminds me of a story I gotta tell you about the Potter family. Tommy Potter is over there. Well, here's George Brown. You better take him. Second and three at the 23 for George and company. George watched the pitch, but he keeps it. Close to the first down. Looks like he has it. And, uh, you, you know, they're over there with Sonny Woods at Wicks Lumber, the Potter family. Today I go into the City Hall shoe repair shop downtown. And who's running that place but another one of the Potters, Dave <laughs> Potter. I walk in, the man talking to me, call me Mr. Conboy, and I'm saying, now wait a minute, who was this? I was first time I was in that shoe shop. And sure enough, it was one of the potters. First and 10 on the 13th, Seminoles threatening once again. Pitch back to Ed Brown. Ed looking for running room, but wow, he doesn't have it, and he's hit hard. A fine hit by number 41, Dom Eckhoff. Best hit of the night for a Melbourne player. 
You know, we're talking about uh, win one for the old timers tonight and uh, talking about Slab Hamilton. His brother, Troy Hamilton, holds the record, individual record for the most yards passing, 1,320 yards. Troy Hamilton in 1983. Second and 13. Inside handoff to Boyd. He gets about four or five yards off the left side. Clock continues to wind down, down to 8.30. Southeast fans quiet at the moment. They had plenty of cheering in the first half. As Southeast jumped out to a 34 to nothing lead in the first half, and really it was history from that point on. Tacked on another third quarter score. Right now we're in the fourth quarter and Southeast threatening again. Ed Brown takes it, and Brown is met before he gets the first down. They're stiffening right up the middle, aren't they? We'll have a field goal situation now. Oh, this is great for this kid, Tommy Warren, isn't it? Needs the practice in a game situation because it might come down to a field goal when you uh, he get had, up against one of those teams like Pensacola, California. He had 33 points during the regular season, but he's looking better and better. This will be a 25-yard attempt. Warren has it up and good. Oh, that's Tommy good. Warren. Boy, his, what a break for this kid. His second field goal of the night. We'll take a break. Southeast leads 44 zip. Back in action as the kickoff went to Franklin. He brought it up the far side. Was finally run out of bounds. About the 30-yard line. Melbourne will have it first and 10. Ball is on the 32-yard line. First and 10 for the Melbourne Bulldogs, who will finish the season at 10 and 2. Southeast will advance to next week's state semifinal game. Franklin carries for about five yards. Before he stopped by Tommy Washington. Washington and Wayman Bowden, that outstanding linebacking combination. Bowden the sophomore, Washington the senior. Second and five. Still in the game quarterbacking. Shorman Flanders, flags all over the field. I was just noticing on the roster, they did move that kid, Steve Pollock, up to the varsity. Now, I would get a kick out of seeing him in there. This kid will amaze you. He can really wing that ball. Let's see if we have some substitutes in on defense now. I see Ronnie Washington in there. Also see Tyving Perkins in there playing a cornerback position. Flanders back to throw, has his man complete, short of the first down. Elton Clark caught the pass. Lothario Jones is in again. So they're starting to get some second string players in there. I see Lothario out there. He had a big hit early in the game from special teams. Six minutes to play in a football game. It's third and three. Melbourne still has its first team in. Flanders rolling out, wants to run, but he's hit hard by number 75, Billy Hamilton. Billy, a 5'5", 178-pound sophomore, getting some playing time. You know, it's terrific how even this uh, second unit comes in and they move like a machine. They're all just part of a machine. Roman Hall in the game. So we got a timeout on the field. We'll take a timeout. 534 to play. Back at Southeast Stadium, where the temperature is hovering around the 40, 45 degree mark. And 
I was just saying, Sam Cornwell, uh, the county tax collector, he came in. He had been over to the Manatee game, and they were blowing out their opponent over there, too. He gets to all the games. Sam does. Fourth and four. Melbourne flounders, pitches back to Franklin. Franklin running for the first down. He has it, and he's finally driven out of bounds at the 44-yard line. Good run by Franklin. In on the stop, Lothario Jones finally drove Franklin out. But that's a first down. Franklin showing a little bit of stuff there. Franklin gained over 1,000 yards. Average over seven yards a carry this year for Melbourne. He's only a junior, so he'll be back. Five minutes to play, first and 10. Pass down, incomplete. Good defense by Jeff Hall. Jeff Hall's played a good football game tonight. He's turned into a fine safety, Tony. Uh, He's only a junior. Yeah, they look like they're going to be strong next year, too. Second and 10 on the 44-yard line. Shorman Flanders wants to throw. Looking downfield, incomplete. Just over the outstretched fingertips of Marvin Jordan. That'll bring up third and 10. Join us next week for more high school playoff action. We'll be bringing you the Manatee and the Southeast game. Pending, of course, where Southeast plays. Draw play to Franklin. He has the first down. Well, he's quick. If Southeast is here, we'll be bringing you the game. Manatee is definitely going to be at home. Just stay tuned to the Braden and Herald. And you'll be able to pick up which games you'll be able to watch. Those big full-page advertisements. Plus, I'm sure Tony will drop something in his column. Well, those full-page ads get them all right. Oh, I thought Flanders has Roberts, breaker. and Roberts gets down inside the 20-yard line. Now, that defensive back that we had out there is so used to that Palmetto 50 with the pitch back, he actually went for it. The kid made a move like he was going to pitch back. Our man went for it. Jimmy Roberts is the leading receiver. He's caught 14 balls this year for nearly 300 yards, but he's been quiet tonight. Flanders has also been quiet, the 5'7", 155-pound junior quarterback. Hand off to Palmazano. He's still Bumble. going. And it's recovered. By Melbourne, and they'll have it first down, and all of a sudden, Paul Meckley puts his first string defense back in the game. Well, this is really a test for the Bushwhacker. What are they on, the one yard line? They're down right near the goal, five yard line. First and goal from the five as the first string defense is back in trying to preserve the shutout. And they stop for a one yard loss. Wayman Bowden in on the stop. He stopped Palomazano and it's second and goal. I'll tell you if they stop him here. They want the shutout. It'd be the sixth shutout of the year. The defense giving up less than four points a game. Timeout by Southeast. So we'll take a timeout with 314 to play in the game. Second and goal from the five yard line. Southeast has got its first team defense back in. Trying to get that shutout. 314 to play in the football game. The crowd now into the game, wanting that shutout. Quarterback keeper, he got and it. he's down close to the goal line, but doesn't get in. 
I'll tell you, Wayman Bowden almost had him I, for a loss. I thought sure that kid had it. Somehow Flounders got out of that, and it'll be a third down situation on the three-yard line. About the two-and-a-half-yard line, actually. Third and goal. Flanders was running for his life. Bowden almost had him for the loss. Two thirty to play. Hand off to number twenty one. Touchdown. It. Henry Kempfer gets the score. And Melbourne is on the board with two twenty nine to play. So that makes the score 44 to six. Extra point attempt now by Bob Pertiera. Snap is good, kick is up, and it's good. So with 2.29 to play in the game, it's 44-7. And we'll keep it right here. At least the Melbourne fans have a little bit to cheer about. Yeah, that'll make the trip home a little easier. <laughs> a little bit, not a whole lot, but the Seminole fans starting to bundle up now and head to the exits. It's 44-7. Southeast ad will advance to the state semifinals. Paul Meckley, another fine job of coaching. Boy, what an outstanding coach Paul Meckley is. Yeah, well, they've had a, a quite a few uh, outstanding coaches even before him. Woody Woodward was a real good coach here, and everybody liked him. He was a real good guy. In fact, he's still coaching here. Yeah, he came and, back. Yep, and uh, he's done a heck of a job for Paul. Paul always gives him all the credit in the world. Yeah. Okay. 2.29 to play. Pertiera kicks off. Taken by Pat Carnegie in the game. Carnegie gets down over the 25 to the 27-yard line. And now you're going to see a lot of unfamiliar numbers in there. Carnegie will stay in and quarterback. It's George Brown is called in tonight. We'll be naming the Group W player of the game. Well, that's going to be a tough one. The Bushwhackers. <laughs> we'll name an offensive and defensive player again. Tony's shaking his head. Who, who? I don't know. It's a tough one to call. Hand off up the middle. We got some new players in the football game. I guess we'd have to go to Iron Perkins on defense. He had those early interceptions. He right? uh, made some key plays. Iron with another good game. And I don't think we gave him one this year, did we? No. I think that's a good call. Iron Perkins on defense. I'm I'd probably give it to Ed Brown. He's had a if he's had his usual whale of a big game. game, you know. Uh, Maybe we should give it to an offensive lineman. That whole yeah. offensive line blocked great tonight. That's right. Good running room. I think that's Daryl Campbell in the game. Yes, it is. Daryl Campbell getting some playing time. Five seven, 178. 5'10", 155 pounds, rather. He's a junior. You know, we keep forgetting about Reggie White, the middle of that offensive line, the S center. 6'2", 240. Wow. He's the kid that they're all, you know, it all anchors about him. First and 10, ball on the 37. Carnegie. Carnegie keeps it, loses a couple yards. But oh. he just wants to keep the clock going. We're down to the 45-second mark. We got Jonathan Jones. He's another one of those offensive linemen. Rob Greenhall, Robert Frazier, Don Newman. Big Ed Purvis, the tight end. Yeah, it, it, it this should be the last play in the game, Tony. Quick game. Less than two hours old. Carnegie will keep it. He dives forward for two yards and that'll do it the clock ticking down as the Seminole fans take it down four three two 
one in its history. The Southeast Seminoles have advanced into the state semifinals for the first time in the history of Southeast High School. The final score, Southeast 44, Melbourne 7. We'll be back to wrap things up from Southeast Stadium right after this. <laughs> 